There's a problem in the world of development. It's because senior developers don't start a new project very often. They usually do it two or three times a year or maybe none. Maybe you just get hired to continue working on a project that has been in production for three years already. That's common. I mean, projects usually tend to live for 10, 15 years. And on the contrary, junior developers, they start a new project every few weeks or maybe a couple of times a day. Like, it's the opposite. So obviously, senior developers don't focus a lot on making an, a project easy to start because it's not what matters. What matters is that the project lasts and it performs and it's fast and it scales. So that brings us to the problem of not having an easy way to start a new project in React. In any technology, to be honest, but in React in particular, it's what we're gonna be focusing on on this video. That's why at 4Geeks, we decided to do our own thing, but I want to start by mentioning the ones that already exist. Like, for example, when Next.js, it's a very famous uh, React framework, it, and it has uh, steps to start a new project in React. I recommend you learn about Next.js if you want to be a React developer at some point. There's also Gatsby.js. Gatsby.js is also very broadly used. I have a website running on, on Gatsby and I think it's it runs smoothly and amazingly. And I also have one running on Next.js, several ones actually, and both are very good, by the way. And you have the that the Create React app that was a template that was created to start producing React. And it was the king of starting producing React for a long time, at least for junior developers. Senior developers have never taken this template seriously. And it's because it's not meant to scale. It's different. It's just for doing little applications. But in our in our opinion, the Create React app brings a lot of concepts that you won't need and a lot of boilerplate. And we think something simpler, it's better for junior developers. So that's why we came up with our own. But instead of showing you what we came up with, I'm just gonna show you Vite, because Vite is what we're using and we think it's super cool and it saves a lot of time and it, it's like it's almost like a template. I'll show you this in a second, but first I wanna explain why we have things like Vite and Webpack. Because what you have seen so far before React, when you were doing HTML, CSS, or vanilla JavaScript, is that every website starts on an index.html, right? This would be the index.html. And that's the only thing browsers will see when, when you request a website. So let's say that we're trying to get into google.com. So this timeline that I'm, this line that I'm drawing here, it's a timeline. From the moment that you type www.google.com, from the moment you type this in your browser and you hit enter to the moment that you see the entirety of the google.com website. So let's let's call that the load event. It's actually, that's how it's called, the load event. The load event triggers when the web, you can see finally see the website. So for example, google.com here. When I see the website like this, it's loaded. So the load event triggers. Okay. So from the beginning, we're going to call this zero milliseconds. And the end of it, when it's finally loaded, we are going to be calling this probably something like, I don't know, let's say 1,000 milliseconds. Google expects that your website should be loading on uh, two milliseconds. It's really hard to get, and you don't have to necessarily make your website load in two milliseconds, but you can take it as a, as a goal, maybe four milliseconds, something like that. And what happens? How do you make a website load so fast? That's why Vite and, oh, Vite and Webpack come in. 
because what makes a website low load uh, slow or fast is basically the the size of what you're downloading because the moment that you type www the browser will start downloading stuff from the internet until it loads and what do you download well the first thing that you will be downloading is the index of html obviously i mean that's the first thing but then the index inside contains a bunch of html right it has a head, it has a body, and in the head, it may have a bunch of link tags that will point to another URL. It could be on the same domain or in a different domain, like slash styles.css. And it may have several of those. Maybe you also have bootstrap. And maybe you also have fun awesome, you know, like typical websites. You may have a lot of a lot of tags. Actually, usually when a website has been in production for a long time, it tends to have more than three. And the same happens with script tags. You may have also in the head some script tag, like for example, bootstrap. the Bootstrap.js part, and you may have also in the body. So for every single script and link that you have, there is an entirely new request that needs to be downloaded from the internet. So you can split, you can split this in a bunch of new pieces, this timeline, that recreate the entirety of the timeline. So let's say that the browser finally loaded the HTML, right? That this happens here, like from, let's put in a different color. Let's say that that happened here. That is the amount of time that it took for the browser to load the index. But then after the index was loaded, it discovered that there is now this link tag. So it now, it needs to go now and ask for the styles link tag. And that's going to be a separate request. It's going to be a separate request. So it's going to go outside. It's going to do specifically, it's going to do get. It doesn't matter, but it's going to go to google.com slash styles.css to look for that particular CSS content. And then it's going to come back. And that's going to take some time. So let's say that this will take 0 0.1 or let's say that it's going to take 100 milliseconds 100 milliseconds and that's this area right here let me make it with a bigger there it is but then you also have to load the next css this one the bootstrap one so this is how much it takes because that was a big one and then you have to load fun awesome. And that's what, how much it takes. So this would be the fun awesome part. And then when all the pieces, it goes like that and it goes like that. And when all the pieces are finally here, it keeps going back and forth asking for new stuff. When all the pieces are finally here, it would also take some time. And I can put that in, let's put it in yellow here. This area here is the actual time that it took to put together the DOM, all the pieces. Ah, by the way, you also have images. So the images are separate requests as well. So um, my point is that, as you can see here, it takes a lot of time to do all of those requests. So what you want to do is that you want to combine them in one only. Is that possible? Can you combine them in one? Well, yes, it is. If you look at something like Webpack, you'll see that in the main web, in the home of the, of the website of Webpack, they explain what I'm explaining right now. They say, okay, if you have several JavaScripts that are connected to each other, that reference each other, and they combine, they have a bunch of files, we will bundle them into one of each. So if you had five images, they would give you one image only or one, one JPG only. And that's crazy, right? Like if I have five JPGs, how would I get only one JPG? Well, I don't know either, to be honest. I don't know the 
the magic behind Webpack. I know a little bit of it, and I don't want to explain that little bit because it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand that a bundle will bundle and will put together all the files in just a few. It will reduce the amount of files that you have dramatically. So what you end up having is you're going to cross this one, you're going to cross this one, you're going to cross this one, you're going to have only styles. And then you're going to have only one. And obviously, you, you don't call it styles. You, it, it would be renamed because it's not styles anymore. It's now, you can call it bundle.css. And this one, you can call bundle.js because right? that will be the bundle. And it contains everything inside. Okay? And it's if you open it, it would be impossible to read. It's crazy. It's also com compressed. So it doesn't have the variable names are small. It's, it, it's almost like it's encrypted. It's really hard to read. You don't have to read it, by the way. So that's Webpack. And the same thing happens with Vit. Vit, it's even better. It's faster than Webpack. If you do a comparison online, you will see that it's faster. And it will do that for you. So now that we know why are we using model, bundle, model bundlers, we're just going to start using Vite. And I want to do it the way that I do it today, that is using AI. I have this little AI chat here with me. I'm just going to ask, how do I start a new Vite project for React? Let's wait for it to answer. OK, to start a new project, you have to install Node.js, obviously. You have to install Vite, and it's giving me a command here, npm create. So let's do that. OK, so here we are. So we're going to follow the steps, npm create. OK, so npm. Create, Vite, latest, and then the name of your project, right? So I'm just going to call it to do. And now it's going to ask me which front end framework do I want to use? I want to use React. I want to use JavaScript. I don't want to complicate myself right now. And now it's telling me that I have to get into the to do's. I have to do npm install and npm run dev. So I'm just going to get into the to do's then do npm install. And while it does that, let me explain the files that were generated for me. So if you open the to this folder, there it is, you'll see that it has a Vite config. This is the configuration file, how you tell the module bundler, how do you want those files to be merged? You can tell it, oh, I want to merge it in three files, or, or I want to merge only this group of JS files, but I don't want this other group of JS files to be merged or bundled. You can do a lot of things, but if you want to read more about that, I would suggest you start talking to the AI about Vite configuration. Like, for example, I let's say I want to have all my CSS files bundled into a, a hello.css file. Let's see what happens. It will probably tell me to modify the Vite config to do that. Well, while, it, while we wait for the answer, I'm just going to keep explaining the rest of the things. OK, so uh, you have a readme that explains a little bit on how, how to continue using the boilerplate, the template. Then you have a package of JSON. Every single Node uh, project or JavaScript project has a package of JSON. And here's where you see the dependencies that you're going to, It's we're, we're, we depend on React for building our project. And we depend on React DOM. And then we also depend on this but not to deploy it or to put it in production, but to develop it. That's why we have dev dependencies. Then we have the script. These are like shortcuts. It's crazy that the shortcut is almost like the actual script. But yeah, I mean, the script section in the package of JSON, it's when you say npm run something, that something, that word something must be one of these, dev, build, lint, or preview, right? So the one... Uh, we're going to be using is dev, npm run dev, and it's basically going to do the same as Vite. Then the package.json, it's a it frozes in time the package. The package the package log frozes in time the package because when when a new versions of Vite or new versions of Java or React come uh, into production, you don't want your project to break, so it will frozen in time and it will know which version of React was used to start this project, and it will remain the same. It will not upgrade until you say so. 
Then you have the index that HTML. This is actually our code. This is our code. The reason the index is not in the source folder because everything that you modify must be in the source folder. The reason they don't put it in the source is because they don't want you to touch it. They don't want you to be touching a lot the index. You can change it. You can touch it a little bit. Let me do npm run that for a second to run the website. And let me put it here on the right. Here it is. You can touch it a little bit. This is the website running. You can touch it a little bit, like changing, for example, the title of it. You can just say here, oh, this is Alejandro's website. And it's going to show up here. Look, Alejandro's website. You can change the favicon here, the, the little icon that shows up. But aside from that, you should not be touching this a lot because these two elements right here are. This is telling uh, JavaScript that everything that you do in React will be inside this div. This is a good practice to have a div with the ID root. And here's where everything will be put in. Every will be here. So this area right here is where the code will be put. Not by you, but by Byte and by a lot of tools that you're using in the background. And for example, if if I say hello, let me modify all this and just say here hello, you'll see that the hello will be not only on your website, but it will also be on the ID root. Look, if I inspect, you will see the body with the root, and here, there's the hello. You see? Hello. There it is, what I was saying. Everything will be in here. Okay, so you don't touch much the index of HTML. What do you touch? Well, everything starts on the main. And how do you know it starts on the main? Because this, there's a place where it's, well, that said, give me a second to remember. Well, actually, I don't remember where the main.jsx is being explicitly said to be the entry of your application. Maybe it's a default. But we can go back here and ask. And that's a good way of explaining about the byte config. Where is being explicitly said that the main the JSX is the entry of my React application? Let's see what we get. I think what it will say is that it's 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 a uh, default. Configuration and you can override it, but here in the byte config. So let's see. In the byte, the point of your algorithm is typically defined the byte file under the build configuration. Also, here is what it's telling us. Look, if we want to change it, we can just copy this here and put it like that, and then we can rename this. But by default, it's going to be the main.jsx file. So we're going to leave it at that. The entry is called main. The same way that when we were doing it, HTML, the index of HTML was always the, the entry for us. So we're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at main. So the application starts at main, and this is main. You already probably know about React. If you don't, I recommend you see another video. But this is where you start the React application into the root, and then you import the app.js and the index.js. So here it is. And then the app.js should be the actual first component you have. You don't want to touch the main a lot because it's a good practice to leave it like with what it already has inside. And then uh, obviously you have an index.css where you're going to put all your CSS files and then the assets where you put all your images. And then in the public folder, you also have, uh, you can put also images there, but I don't recommend you put them there if you're going to be using them on your code. The only reason Vite is outside here in the public and not inside in the assets is because Vite is being used by index.html. It's not being used by the actual um, JavaScript files. But with that, with this already done, this is something you can just publish to Vercel or anywhere, and it's going to work. You can have your components here. You can do, look, it already has a state and a React components. You can have more components. You can create a new component here. You can call it the task.js. X or JS if you want. And obviously you would have to import React from React and you would have to do const task and then do an, a function and return the first task. And then you can obviously export the task and then you would use it 
you can export the task and then you would use it from here. You would say import, since I exported by default, the word default, then when I import, I don't need to put the cooler brackets, okay? So I'm just gonna import task from task.jsx. And I think I have an error. Oh yeah, I forgot about the equal. So let me just put the equal here. There it is. So there's my task. Let's see if I'm able to, to put it here and render it, task. Let's see. I'm still getting an error. Let me see which one is the error. Internal error, unexpected token. So there is an unexpected token. Oh, I thought the task was fully finished. Okay, there it is. There's my task, look. It's on the website. Well, but yeah, you get the idea. So to finish, okay, to finish my explanation, I want to bring another, well, the actual boilerplate that we're using at the school, and it's this one. It's created from, from Byte, from Vit, using Vit. And it has almost the same structure. Here it is. It's on GitHub. You can find it always by getting into templates and boilerplates, and then you would get into React.js. The simple one, not the advanced one, does another video and another thing. And then here you would see um, in the main branch, I'm, I'm in the next branch because I'm about to publish it, but in the main branch, it's where you should see it. You're going to see all these files here. You can see that our Vite configuration, it's slightly modified just to be running on the port 3000. So that means that when you run it, you see when when I was running mine here, you see how it was running on the port 5173. Well, I wanted to run consistently on the port 3000 3, um, because that's the port that it's been opened by code spaces or Gitpod. So that's why I want to consistently open in the port 3000. But you'll see that we have the same index.js with, with the files there. We have a Versal configuration because we want you to be able to deploy this to Versal. Versal is a hosting. And this is already made for Versal. So I would strongly recommend that you deploy into Versal your projects because you're going to get hired if your projects, you're going to get hired. You have more probabilities of getting hired if your project is Polish. And also, Virtual is very easy to, it's free, and it's very easy to publish your project. And this boilerplate, this template is made for that. Then we have the package JSON like before. We have the index like before. We have the favicon. And then we have a styles folder with the index, a JS folder with the main, and a, fo a component folder. So the main is similar. Look, it's create root, the same that we had in the, in the file. The difference here is that we we have a component folder. And the reason we do that is because we want you to be thinking of your components like something that you can reuse. So your components will be here, and then you can you can create new files under JS, not under components, new files under JS that will be using those components. Okay, so your components will be on the components folder. And the only thing that changes is when you're importing. So look, when I'm importing, I'm importing from the components instead of from the main, like I was doing on the other boilerplate or from the source folder. Yeah, and then instead of assets, we call this folder image, but it's very similar. Okay, so this is the Academy boilerplate, the template. And as of as of today, I think we it's, it's very close to what Vite gives you. And I hope you enjoy the, the explanation and you can build amazing projects with this simple template. Just to finish, if you're gonna build something that has multiple pages or multiple URLs, I don't recommend this boilerplate. I would recommend you choose the second boilerplate that I saw that you saw here is this one, React Advanced. Okay. And another thing to mention is that if you go to start.forgixacademy.com, you will find a lot of documentation about these templates and how to use them. If you go to the front end and then start a new project in React, you will find a lot of documentation on there and then on how to deploy to render.com or to Vercel. And we're, we're going to keep adding more documentation here. So that's this is a great resource to get more information on building your React application. Bye-bye.